only answer to the current health and economic disaster is to effectively suspend capitalism. Stop pretending like we're still living in free market Wall Street rules America. We're not. And the best way to deal with this is to explicitly suspend those rules of capitalism and all the BS mythology that comes with it. Suspend all debt collection, foreclosures, evictions, credit report hits, all of it. The fairy tale about how we can pay it back if only we're good little boys and girls, that has been completely demolished. The healthcare system and other critical industries should be nationalized. We can't wait around hoping the free market will get its act together on gowns and masks and ventilators and other absolutely essential supplies. Hospitals are going to go bankrupt if the government doesn't effectively take them over. It's not even temporary socialism we need, but basically temporary communism. Citizens support supplies. Hospitals are going to go bankrupt if the government doesn't effectively take them over. It's not even temporary socialism we need, but basically temporary communism. Citizens support and will get us act together on gowns and masks and ventilators and other absolutely essential supplies. Hospitals are going to go bankrupt if the government doesn't effectively take them over. It's not even temporary socialism we need, but basically temporary communism. Citizens We can't wait around hoping the free market will get its act together on gowns and masks and ventilators and other absolutely essential supplies. Hospitals are going to go bankrupt if the government doesn't effectively take them over. It's not even temporary socialism we need, but basically temporary communism. Citizens supported by the government, major sections of the economy planned by the government. Because 30% unemployment isn't something you bootstrap and free market your way through. It's something that our nation can only survive without mass chaos and unrest by truly embracing collectivism from the bottom to the top. You know, I have good news for you, Margaret, because we have a there is a solution using available technology today to fix the economic part of this problem. The solution is universal testing. What you want is every single person to get tested every day and then they would wear a badge like they would at a after they voted or something like that uh, to show that they've been tested, this would immediately uh, uh, sort out who's been infected and who hasn't been infected. That would help the healthcare sector, but it would also help the economy because we could interact with each other with a lot of confidence. Eventually what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world where you'll have some countries that won't have it under control, sadly. You want to completely block off the ability for those, you know, people to go there and come back and move around. They have to get the shot. The vaccinations are so important. We'll get its act together on gowns and masks and ventilators and other absolutely essential supplies. Hospitals are going to go bankrupt if the government doesn't effectively take them over. It's not even temporary socialism we need, but basically temporary communism. Citizens supported by the government, major sections of the economy planned by the government. Because 30% unemployment isn't something you bootstrap and free market. 10-point plan, Communist Manifesto. Uh, abolition of private property, no longer have private ownership of property. Two, heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Take more money from people who have higher income. Three, abolish right of inheritance. This is getting pretty small and hard to read. Basically, when you kick the bucket, the government gets it, not your family. Confiscate property owned by immigrants and rebels. These citizens no longer have rights to their property. That font is like a seven. Good grief. Establish national bank. All money and I can't, loans are owned by the federal government, which continues a monopoly. Nationally controlled communication and transport. 
State controls all communication and travel. Seven, government ownership of the means of production. Factories, land, and natural resources. Is this picture coming together for you? Just start checking them off. Number eight, industrial and agricultural armies. Everyone is, I can't read that word. It probably says able to work. Number nine, redistribute population. Eliminate, I can't read that word. Basically, move people around and I imagine eliminate those that you don't want. Ten, free and public education. Elimination of children during factory work. I can't read the rest of it. It's too small. Something about education and manufacturing. I tried to find a bigger one of that, but that, that was it. Well, Mike, uh, the hill has figured out what the problem is and how we fix it. Remember this show we right, watched Crystal, yesterday? What's on your radar? 30%. Are these still going to become new no. new features on the show? Oh, trust me. After after what I saw in this video, they will. These below average fucking this one, barely this is barely a, uh, eligible for television duo. I love these. This two. is the hill. <laughs> All right, Crystal. What's on your radar? 30% unemployment. That is where the president of the St. Louis Fed says we may be heading. The highest rate ever recorded during the Great Depression was 24.9%. We cannot possibly imagine the pain that will cause or the radical generational changes that are going to result from the days, weeks, and months that we're staring down right now. In a matter of days, we've already witnessed profound shifts. Just take a listen. Do you support the idea of the government taking an equity stake in certain companies? <clears throat> I do. I really do. Would you consider airlines or Boeing, or what, what are you thinking uh, of? We will be helping the airline industry. We will be helping the cruise ship industry. We probably will be helping the hotel industry. We'll probably be where, where jobs are created. You don't want to lose industries like this. These are incredible industries. You can't lose them. So we'll be focused on many industries. And I have to say, I can't say it strongly enough, we will be helping small businesses. That's where it's complicated, because there's a lot of small, you know, that's the engine of the of the country we they are putting in the final pegs or whatever you want to call them of communism under the guise that they're just helping the economy the government's always helping you in fact every time the government puts their fingers in something they just exacerbate the problem making it worse. It always becomes a better situation for them financially or through the stealing and overreaching of power. But for you, the little people, it becomes a deeper issue, a deeper problem. And all of these people that are going to get booted out of their houses because of the problem that your government, and now your world government. See, this isn't just your American government that's doing this. This is what you have to get through your head. This is the product of the global government seeping in and through your government. You are a global citizen, even if you don't realize it. And they mean you harm. They're just big fat, evil, orange liars. And Steve and Yana on Israeli News Live are going to have the guts to come out in a video entitled Whose Responsibility Is This? 
and then shill and front and cover for Donald Trump. Are you kidding me? And because they pretend to be Christians, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, but they're Chabad. They are Chabad, and they, they are Masons, and they are pretending to be Christians. They are screwing with doctrine, and in their latest vomit-worthy broadcast, I couldn't even bring myself to listen to the whole half an hour show or whatever it was. They started saying, oh, no, that someone's making Donald do these things. There's Donald is totally innocent. No, he's not. He's working with another group of humans on this planet that hate your guts and want you dead. Okay? That's just a straight out truth. I don't know how else I can explain it to you other than to tell you the hard, cold truth in a hard, cold voice. I'm sorry. And you have all of the bad guys on the planet, the communists, the Jays who want you dead and under the control of their dictator to come, the fake uh, imposter messiah. You, you have the Masons, you have the Gnostics, you have the techies, you have the bankster, you know, trillionaires. You have all the bad guys and they've all aligned together as that global government with that dragon persona or symbol or whatever you want to call it that is satanically infused and it is for the takeover of the planet, the war against humanity, and it has the goal, Revelation 12, 3 and 4, to absolutely destroy the church. And this channel continues to hold firm that the Lord is coming on a feast of trumpets to rescue his bride and to transform his children into glorified immortal flesh that cannot be murdered. And the rapture glorification is in Revelation 12, 5. Only part of that sign occurred back in 9, 23, 17 on a Shabbat Shuva, a Sabbath of return. And you can read about that in Hosea 14, 2 and 10. That's Hosea 14, 2 and 10, and Joel 2, 15 through 27, Joel 2, 15 through 27, and it is also in Micah, I believe the seventh chapter, this theme of return to me, return to me and I'll return to you. And so we are listening to people tell us that capitalism is out. And communism is in. And I doubt these two are Christians, but this guy's facial expressions as he's watching industry after industry be taken over by the government is absolutely a communist ploy. And the sign of communism is the dragon, at least for China, the largest communist dictator nation comprising one-eighth the planet, putting one-eighth of the planet under communist regime. And they have just, with their technology, made friendships and relationships with other wicked individuals, the Sanhedrin, and the rotten to the core Noachides or Noachide people, the Masons, and your orange Cheeto here, this absolutely evil human being that is not a Christian, that has not the slightest clue about the politics that would be in tandem with Christianity. So, for example, um, freedom, not what he's pushing, which is communism. Trump is pushing communism. Why do you think they had him enter in as a fake Christian, a Christian that they then make fun of all the Christians that worship him? Because you practically do. And then you have Israeli News Live come along and tell you that Trump is, he's totally innocent. That's disgusting to me. And you got Richie from Boston's channel and he has James True, I guess his name is, and he's on for an hour and he is defaming the shepherd, defaming Jesus Christ, defaming the Bible, defaming Passover, 
He is uh, teaching new age witchcraft and prana of Hinduism. I left two huge scathing comments. Uh, making people take responsibility for their actions. If you are going to reject the lamb, then you're going to go to hell to go pay for your sins. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. And then, of course, Christians have been taught and seated for so long. You can't judge anybody. Only the Lord can judge them. No, the Lord already has judged them. And when that judgment day comes, it will be enacted. But you absolutely have to judge good and evil. You cannot make it through this planet unless you judge good and evil. I am so sick of the brainwashing that is how the ruling elite keep people in line. And when they get inside your brain and try to play with scripture to control you, that's the worst of it. You know, yeah, pray for the people on their way to hell. Yes, do that. Nobody ever said don't do that. But this idea that we constantly have to limit people and rescue them from their consequences is, to me, evil. And if people really want to reject Jesus, then they can. But you don't have to withhold the consequence of being honest and telling people then you're going to go to hell and pay for your own sins. Not because I said so, because the Bible that I say I believe in says so. So it's just unbelievable the layers of deception and brainwashing that come down on this society up to and including a subsect of Christianity. And even in Christianity, most of Christianity is not soundly saved and born again. But you are watching communism elapse all around you. They just have you people in general so distracted and so ignorant that you don't even know when they're presenting to you communism. You're just like, oh, no, that sounds great. He wants to help small business. Deception, deception and deception. This is unbelievable will be helping small businesses. Yeah. Well, what's the problem, Mike? Where would you like me to begin, Royce? Please. Just keep it clean. Because, oh, this um, is going to be bad. Yeah, government takeover of equity in businesses is not good. No, it's not. It's, um, it's very uh, Venezuela-Cuba sounding. Right? It is. Like oh, didn't Venezuela have a big, giant crash? When the uh, dollar went way, way down because they put all their eggs in one basket and you had a dictatorship. And do you think the people of the country were cared about? No, their food was reduced to the point where I read one story that this woman had all the money to buy like an egg and maybe a piece of bread. And she shared half the egg with her cat. And then they were out slaughtering, getting animals from the zoo or wherever they could find food. And you're watching the setup for that again. That, oh, my God. Dude. Don't say that. We're fucked. We're so, oh. we are so unbelievably fucked. Okay, I really wish these people could, like, execute a thought without having to lace the whole thing with profanity because I really want to hear their commentary, but <sighs> not at the expense of having to pause it every time they come up with an expletive. Um, so I, we've come to the end of the road here. I'm probably not going to play any more of this because I don't want to have to expose people to this. Um, you know, when the unbelievers get it, and the Christians don't. It That just terrifies me to no end. We're supposed to be helping our brother. We're supposed to be the ambassador between a holy God and man. And we're supposed to be helping them. And you have a culture that is something is so wrong. With this culture, I don't even know where to begin. I suppose I will just end it with saying that even if people don't understand everything there is to understand about communism and how at the end of 
Communism is nothing but an absolute bloodbath, which absolutely makes sense when you consider the defining um, outcome of the goals of the SEALs in depopulation. You just begin to understand worldwide communism with this particular rabbinical flair and technolo technological flair underneath it is what is the catalyst for everything that's setting up on this war against humanity, this global government, communistic, rabbinical, throw in the Vatican and all their world religions, the stuffing down of the church that we can't even go to church. We can't even find any churches in our area that are open. And even if we could, so many of them are absolutely not saved and worthless and part of NAR or part of some Lusane covenant or part of something that goes so far beyond what the Lord said was written in scripture. But I will comfort myself and my listeners with the blessed hope that is coming. That whatever else happens, I don't know other than what my Bible says. But I do know that the blessed hope is coming. And that's Titus 2.13. Let's go there. Because as the world is literally shaking and crumbling, and I am mindful of the parable that Christ told about the two houses that mankind could make for themselves that I've read about since I was a little tiny kid my whole life, there were those that built their house on the rock. And when, not if, when the wind and the storms began to blow, that house survived. And Christ is that rock we build our lives upon and hide our lives in. And what profits us is eternal life and a forever standing in him forever, right? And then you have those that built their house on the sand, the shifting sand. And when the same storm came, their house was destroyed. Their life was destroyed. Their, their forever eternity that could never be with Christ because they rejected him was destroyed. It was all destroyed, right? Let's go with the clock. That's pretty. We wait for the blessed hope. That should actually be capped. Blessed and hope should all be capped because it's for the person of Jesus of the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that is the note that we are going to end this video on, that whatever anybody else does out there, the church has built her life on the rock, and the rock will stand. And while everything around you crumbles, while well, communism paints itself red with the blood of its victims globally through Agenda 21, and evil men wax worse and worse, we're going to celebrate in the bows of heaven, shouting in triumph and placing our crowns before the feet of the king. And that that is what I stand on. And I'm so excited because we are watching the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25. Thank you so much and God bless you. Uh, subs are appreciated. Liking this video is helpful and sharing this with others, especially when you have the news articulating that capitalism is dead and that communism is here. People need to understand what this means and God is giving you a little bit of time to get into that ark. But that offer is not going to exist forever. The ease of getting into him 
is not going to exist forever. I can tell you that right now. God bless you and your families. <laughs>